First story. I broke up with my girlfriend after she cheated on me with her coworker. Now she stole my cats to make me more miserable, thinking I would let it go as I did to her. Now I realize how f-ed she is after receiving a court notice with her dad supporting me. And that's how I got my pets and money for her. I hope her affair was worth ruining our three-year relationship. One of my best friends throughout all of high school hung out with other friends pretty often and got much closer later on. Eventually, after high school, my parents wanted to sell the house, so I had to move out. I had been dating this girl for over a year at that point, and she and I decided to move in together. Fast forward a year, and we did everything together. Multiple semesters in college, countless road trips, trips to meet my family estate over, a trip to Orlando, a trip to another country. I took her everywhere I could, and we did fun things every weekend. We even got my first two cats together. We were the golden couple our friends looked up to, and my relationship with her felt extremely strong. I felt very emotionally dependent on her, and we always had comfort in each other. There were very few arguments, and the few small ones we had only ended in us becoming closer. There was no way anyone who knew us could have seen the following coming. It was indescribably surprising. Fast forward another year. A couple weekends ago. I'm playing a game, and Tarkov is chatting with friends while she's out with her friend, named him. That night I had plans with her, but she explained that M and her wanted to hang out spontaneously, and I had no reason to object, though it felt off that she would blow off our plans of hanging out that night. No biggie. I trusted her and loved her with all my heart. She hadn't texted me for about two hours, so I asked how it was going. No response. Thirty minutes later, I called her three times with no response. This had me very worried, as she'd answered every call in the last five years. I checked her location on one of our apps. Snapchat. It was off. Something I wasn't insecure about, but we'd both never had it off since we started dating. Now I was really worried. I wasn't sure if something had happened to her, and the person knew to turn off her location, or if she was lying about where she was. Eventually she answered my calls with a text. It's good, in response to my, how's it going, baby, an hour prior. This was no good. I was pissed that she would so shortly answer my obviously huge worries. I spammed her, asking for a selfie and asking for an explanation of the missed calls and location being turned off. Short, one-word replies, five minutes apart, only made my mental state worse. Eventually, I started asking for pictures of him. I was becoming doubtful that she was telling the truth. She's in the bathroom. Okay, show me when she's out. She has to go home. Eventually, I asked what she was lying about. She told me she was actually with a co-worker. A guy. Wow. From there, it was pure anger from me. And she was telling me I didn't satisfy her or spend enough time with her. She admitted to being unhappy with me and told me she only stayed with me for financial and apartment security. I worked two jobs, one every weekday from the morning to the afternoon, while going to my classes. She usually worked afternoons and evenings, but regardless, we hung out every single night. We spent every single weekend for years going out watching movies, hiking, going on road trips, trying out new games, hanging out with friends, and cooking new foods together. Countless hours later, she apparently didn't appreciate it, but never discussed it with me. I got a new roommate to sign into my lease, so she could be removed. We made up slightly, with no possible chance that I would stay with her, but after four or five days of sobbing and staying home from work, I felt clear-minded for once, and we even watched some shows together. I helped her pack her things and moved mine out of the way. I helped her load her car multiple times, and we had some good times. Innocent, goofy, silly insults, and messing around. Laughing. Just like we had our entire relationship. The morning she was supposed to finish packing, she asked to leave for an hour, while her father was at our apartment. After lots of back and forth, she gaslighted me into guilt, and I fell for it. I left for an hour, and our last four texts were the following. All out. I left my keys at the front office. Me. Say bye-bye to Jay. Yes, her. I love you. Me, take whatever time you need to settle in. And let me know how your apartment search goes. I don't catch every call, but I'll respond to every text. She then blocked me on everything, as well as all of my friends and any close mutuals we had. J was the cat we verbally agreed I'd keep, and B was the cat she was supposed to keep. This was more than fair, in my opinion. I returned home, and J, B, and many other items we agreed I'd keep, and even paid her for some of were gone. The person who destroyed my trust and our relationship went a step further. She abused every ounce of good intentions I had put towards helping her, despite the cheating. 
I'm still reeling from this betrayal by the person who helped shape who I am as an adult. From my number one go-to comfort character for the last four plus years of my life. Legal action is being taken over the stolen cat. I'll eventually post an update and details I shouldn't post publicly yet later on. I've lost a lot of weight, and my psyche has been immensely damaged. Hopefully I learn from my mistakes. Take consideration of the new red flags I've noticed, and don't let any similar issues arise again. But in the end, no matter what I did differently, she most likely would have done the same thing. And as long as I understand that, I believe I can eventually find someone better for me. Over the course of the last four or five months, she destroyed my SX drive. Over the course of the last year and a half, I haven't spoken to a single female in any of my classes or previous female friends I had over text due to her paranoia. I respected this, even though it caused some personal concern. I sacrificed so much in my life and covered her half of our payments multiple times. It was clear in our last few texts that I had no intention of cutting her off or hating her for the rest of my life. This has destroyed me. I caught her cheating during the third week of August, 2022. Edit. Sorry for the title. Don't let it take away from the story, though. Edit 2. Wow. I did not expect this kind of reach and feedback on my first Reddit post. I will be adding further explanations regarding why I was so worried about her lack of response. Most of the criticisms on my end are coming from this, so hopefully some context into the dynamic of our relationship will help with this. I will also be posting the civil case updates as reasonably as I should, without a chance of hurting my odds. I absolutely appreciate all the feedback, comments, suggestions, advice, criticism, and even the jokes. It means the world to me to suddenly become involved with such a supportive community on a topic that has recently devastated me. Edit. It's been rough. It's been nearly a month since I caught her chesting. Every day is a 50-50, whether I feel like crap and I'm caught up in the past, have self-doubts, or feel totally fine and focused on my classes or work. It's come to my attention that her work closes at 7, and this isn't fast food or some sort of retail. But she was never home before 9.30, leaving me to believe she was spending time with this coworker often, possibly every single closing shift, which would have allowed her to feel bold enough to bail on our plans and think I wouldn't find out. Any negative comments, or more so, criticisms of myself, came from my post, including that I felt emotionally dependent on this girl. For better or for worse, I hope it's understandable that being close friends with this girl for over a quarter of my life and spending most of that time dating her, half the time living with her, etc., definitely led me into a false sense of security. Having been with her my last couple teenage years and the first couple adult years, I don't see how it may be difficult to grasp that I really did believe and try with all my heart to make this relationship one of those high school sweetheart beginnings. And no, I wasn't trying to follow some stereotype or keep false hope because we met young. I just truly felt that, despite any disagreements and despite the sacrifices I made for her, we were healthy in nearly every category that mattered. And with the issues we overcame, I never would have thought any disagreement of ours could stand the test of our relationship's time. I was not literally, desperately dependent on her for my emotions. But I always felt like I'd have her when I needed her, and I wanted her to know she'd always have me. When the person you feel this way about suddenly upheaves all of the progress and time you shared with them, well, as many of you know even better than me, it's devastating and detrimental to the optimism I've had my entire life. Court updates. The complaint was filed, the constable paid, and evidence was printed of our verbal agreement and its violation. The constable has contacted me to inform me that her working location is refusing to allow them to speak with her. There is one attempt left, and then I need to dive into a special service request or hire a private summons. Either way, the costs will be added to the suit. For my general outlook on the case, I feel extremely wronged, and it is undeniable that a crime was committed against me with the intent to spite me and for her own selfish desires. I had a friend over, my new roommate, during one of the days before the theft of my belongings and pet, and the three of us discussed who was keeping what and who would keep either J or B, the cats. I have his written and notarized statement ready for use in court, as damning evidence that she and I had a verbal agreement, one that she obviously violated. Physically, she took both cats and multiple of my items, and in the last four texts between the two of us, there is usable evidence. That being said, myself being financially stable and responsible, I'm basically allowing whatever process needs to take place out of my wallet, knowing that winning the case would mean any court-related costs are then awarded to me. This is simply a waiting game, and by now she knows I'm not bluffing or simply going to give up and let this bane keep my loving cat.
and I am inquiring into the possibility of taking both back, though I'm not sure what the odds of that are as it's not requested in my formal complaint. Lastly, for now, the extreme amounts of support both in the comments and in my DMs have given me countless smiles and overall helped my confidence both in moving on and in pursuing the case. Though too much alone time lately always leads to negative reflection and utilizing my 2020 hindsight. Update. I've been speaking to a therapist since the week all of that happened. I gotta admit, my whole life I'd never really seen the point in one. But having someone to speak to who knows how to effectively reassure you, it's a nice way to take some of the mental stress off your shoulders. Fantastic news. Today, only 10 days since I made the original post, is absolutely a huge turnaround. I had filed the civil suit as I intended and paid for summonses. Traditionally, you get three summons attempts before you need to move on to a more expensive, yet thorough means of serving someone civilly. The first two attempts were wasted on her working address. The constable was told both times promptly to screw off, and that they had no clue who the constable was referring to. The third and final traditional attempt had the constable head to the father's house of my ex. Being the reasonable man I know he is, which is why I allowed her to be in my apartment in the first place, thinking he'd be there the whole time. He contacted his daughter regarding the constable and, out of good conscience, and for his daughter's financial well-being, explained to her that she needed to meet with a summoner and find a way to get this case dropped, because it was clear she would not win once served. The constable called me earlier today to inform me that she had been served. She promptly reached out to me, for the first time since telling me she loved me, that she had told my cat goodbye, and that all of her things were out of the apartment. She essentially asked what it would take to have this case dropped as she definitely could not afford more than the money and pet return I wanted. I explained my demands, and she asked for a couple things she had left here. Laptop, some clothes. I agreed to drop the case after I was paid, and have everything stolen returned, including my beloved cat. Sure, I could have denied her and dragged her through months and months of court, at the end of which she'd most likely have to pay all of my fees on top of hers, as well as these demands. I, in no way or manner, forgive her at all, but I don't have it in my heart to ruin someone's life as badly as this financial situation would do to her. I feel it is much healthier, and says a lot more about me that I'm able to settle this ultimately outside of court. I will never speak to her again outside of this exchange. Yes, she will be paying for all of the fees and time I've put into this case already. I am so unbelievably excited to get my cat back. Even though she deserves every little bit of what I planned through court, I'd like to move on as fast as possible and not be legally involved with this horrendous human being for up to a year longer than I need to be. Second story. My entitled friend made a fake profile to test her boyfriend's loyalty, then created another to bully him, saying he needed to be scared to break up or date another woman. I exposed her to her boyfriend, and she blew up her last chance of recognition. Now she blames me for ruining her life, and went online accusing her ex-boyfriend of abusing and cheating on her, only to get called out and ridiculed. I 30F know a couple. Let's call them Blair 28F and Ben 30M. I've known both of them separately since they met and started dating. They fell in love pretty fast and became a couple. We always thought they were perfect for each other. Both were attractive, fun, and energetic people who were crazy about each other and also great friends to the rest of us. Important note. We are all from different countries and live as expats in the same country. So after a while, Ben had some family problems back home, which required him to fly back to be with his family but this would be temporary. Blair has always been great, supportive, and understanding towards Ben. He would always go around saying how happy he was and how proud he was of his relationship. I met Blair recently for a little girl's outing. It's been about five, six months since Ben left. After a few drinks, she told me that she had made a fake Instagram account to test her boyfriend. I thought it was weird, but I didn't say much. She said he didn't reply and blocked the fake account, which should have been the end of her test, in my opinion but she continued to tell me that she used another fake account to add him and call him names like ugly, good for nothing, etc. Pretty bad stuff. I was flabbergasted and could not believe what was happening. I asked her why, on earth, she'd do such a thing. Her explanation was that she is the best girlfriend he can have, and she just wanted to remind him how great she is so he can appreciate her more. She wanted to show him how horrible the dating pool is and that he should hold on to her tight. I told her this was insane and she needed to stop. But she continued to tell me, no, and this is nothing harmful. Ben had told me about a fake account messaging him, but I didn't know it was her. Ben assumed it was his ex who was proven to be a stalking weirdo, but now I know it's not her. 
It's actually his loving girlfriend. I told Blair she needed to stop, and I would love to help her work on the issues that make her act like this. I tried to explain how this would eventually ruin her relationship and Ben's confidence as well. But she is not listening. So I told her if she didn't stop, I would go ahead and tell Ben everything. I have screenshots of us discussing this matter over texts and how she's not willing to stop. Would I be the ah uh, if I told Ben everything? My boyfriend says Ben needs to know. And I totally agree because nobody deserves to be treated this way. But some of my friends back home told me to not tell him, but instead convince her to come clean, which I've been trying but to no avail. So. Whipta. Edit. This has been a shocking event for me. We all thought she was a great person all this time. It never even crossed our minds that she'd even think such things, let alone act on them. It hasn't been very long since I found out about this about a week or less. I waited this long to give her the chance to come clean on her own and figure out a way to break it to Ben gently. If the roles were reversed, I'd still give a man the same chance, which isn't really my point in posting this, but I appreciate the comments and wanted to clarify my position on this. Thanks to your encouragement, I feel much more confident in telling him everything and possibly facing her later. My boyfriend and I messaged Ben and arranged a video call, so we will tell him everything soon with the evidence. I will post an update. Thank you all so much. Relevant comments. Magdovas. You challenged her on it. What exactly did she say to that? OP. When I said if she didn't stop, I would tell Ben, she just stared at me and asked, why? At this point, I'm convinced that she is so far off the grid that she can't even see what's wrong with what she is doing. I told her it was absolutely insane and argued for about an hour. And she kept saying, but there's nothing wrong with it. It's just a fake account, while laughing. After that night, which was about a week ago, I've been pestering her with my texts and telling her if she doesn't stop and come clean, I'll tell Ben. She turned on me and messaged my boyfriend something like, OP wants to talk to Ben. Can you keep her out of my relationship? But my boyfriend already knows everything. This whole thing made me think that once challenged, she would turn on anyone. Update. First off, thank you for encouraging me to be a better friend. I don't like confrontation, and I shy away from anything that's dramatic like this. I also want to apologize for the overdue update, but life was crazy for me. So here's the update. After about 5-6 hours of my post, we had a phone call with Ben. My boyfriend was there with me to break the news to him. First, I asked Ben whether the fake accounts were still messaging him or not. He said no, not for a week or so. Then I told him that the messages were being sent by Blair, and she told me this herself. He didn't understand at all. I told him everything. The girls night out Blair and I had. How she told me what she was doing and why. How I asked her to stop, but she didn't see the point, etc. As I was explaining, I saw my friend Ben losing the spark in his eyes, and I saw the devastation settle in. The horror was real for him. Then, when I was done telling him everything, there was a moment of silence. My boyfriend told him if he needed or wanted us to help him in any way, we would be more than happy. He thanked us for telling him everything and wanted us to keep this a secret from Blair. He didn't want her to know that he now knew everything. He said he needed some time to figure stuff out since it's all a big shock now. I sent him whatever evidence I had. And we ended the call. We didn't hear from Ben again for a couple of days. One night, he called my boyfriend to ask for his help retrieving a box from his and Blair's apartment. He said Blair would be home to let us in. And we could take the box after checking the contents of it. He gave us a list of all the things that should be in the box. When we arrived, Blair was there with the box. But she seemed off. I asked her how she was doing. And she said not very well because the antidepressants were weighing on her. She self-diagnosed and started taking unprescribed, illegally obtained antidepressants. I said antidepressants could be dangerous to take on your own due to side effects. And she really should ask a doctor before taking them. She brushed me off, gave us the box, and shut the door on us. We called Ben, told him the box was with us, and asked if he wanted us to send it to him. He said to just keep it safe until he was back. He came back to the country three days ago. He went to see Blair, and they had a huge falling out. He confronted her with everything I gave him, and she said it was his fault for being absent. Ben said he would be willing to try to understand and help her if she didn't blame him. After all, it's not his fault that his father is dying, and he has to be there for his family. He came to fix things, but her reaction blew up everything. He took the remaining belongings and left the house. He's now staying in our spare bedroom. The man is devastated. In the past two days, Blair has been blowing up social media with lies. Posting things about how Ben cheated on her, 
while he was supposed to be helping his family, saying he's always been one foot out the door, and she is better off without him. She should have never lowered her standards for him, etc. Ben is not a social media person, so he just deactivated his accounts and is now trying to heal. She's called me to curse at me multiple times. We have now all blocked her number and her social media. Ben will be staying here with us until he flies back home in the upcoming weeks. I tried to help both of my friends, and now I'm helping my only friend in this situation. I texted Blair's cousin to let her know that she's taking unprescribed antidepressants, acting erratic, and should see a doctor. And that was it. I don't like this at all. I don't want to be in the middle of all of this. But Ben needed to know the truth. For Ben, he still feels betrayed and shocked. But he also feels that it was for the best that this would come to an end since he cannot trust her anymore. I guess this is the end of my update. The relationship ended. The friendship ended. We don't know what she plans to do next. Thank you again for encouraging me to help my friend. Like I said before, I'm not the one for confrontation. I feel sad for the way things turned out, but I guess it is what it is. All in all, watch out for fake accounts. Relevant comments. Scary Cycle 1508. You should be another friend and post your own social post, tagging Blair's post. Don't just spill everything, but just say that Blair's account is full of lies because Ben never cheated. And whoever of your friends wants the truth can contact you directly, and you will show them all the proof. OP. I asked Ben if he wanted us to post online about her insane lies, and he said not just yet. Some of his friends are collecting some more evidence from her posts and from the abusive texts she sent. I think there will be a public post online with the evidence once they have enough. Also, I saw some screenshots of her posts via mutual friends, and it seems like the comment section isn't going as well as Blair expected. People are questioning her and asking her for evidence, which she does not have. I got a couple people commenting on her posts, saying she's lying and she was bullying Ben. She's bitter and called me a bunch of names for ruining her relationship. Most of our mutual friends know the story now because they called us and Ben. Also, last night, Ben, my boyfriend, and I went out for some drinks and saw many of our friends. So on most ends, her posts are being perceived as a bitter reaction to her losing in her own little game. OP, when told she was a good friend, tried to help Blair as well. Thank you so much. I really tried to help Blair so many times, but she refused my offers. I can honestly say I did my best as a friend, and now we're no longer friends. I do not regret anything. I am just sad that a person I valued as a friend turned out this way. And yeah, I felt obligated to tell her family that she's not doing well. I'm not responsible for her, but she obviously needs serious help. And her family should take over from here. Her cousin and I talked about her alarming situation. She didn't know, and apparently her family had no idea either. So I guess that's up to them now. Third story. OP's mom always favored him, neglecting his sister, and told him she was jealous of his achievements. Now, OP realizes he was the golden child after seeing their childhood photos where his sister is nowhere to be found. Now, OP wants to reach out to his sister. Plus sister's response. I-15M have an older sister 16F. Although we're only a year and a half apart, we're completely different. I'm very social and have never had trouble making friends. I love going out and playing sports. I hate studying, but despite that, I do well in school. And even though I'm considered the class clown, most teachers seem to like me. My sister, on the other hand, is very shy and introverted. She loves reading and studying, and she's one of the top students in her class, with a 4.0 GPA. She has a small group of friends, but she almost never goes out with them. She just likes to stay in her room. Growing up, my sister was always jealous of me, always saying that our mom preferred me over her. Whenever we brought this up, our mom reassured us that she loved us equally. Mom always told me to ignore my sister's comments saying she was just jealous of me. Recently, our mom took both of us to a clinic for a comprehensive psychological evaluation. This was mainly because my sister was stressed about what she's going to study in college, and mom thought it would be good for me too. The evaluation included an IQ test, personality test, spatial vision test, memory test, and others. My sister outperformed me in almost every aspect. She has an IQ of effing 140 mine is 122. The only test I scored slightly better on was the memory test. I always thought I was smarter than my sister, because I hardly study and still do well in school, while she works much harder for slightly better grades. My mom was also surprised by my sister's results. We thought we didn't know she was that smart since she's very quiet, so it's harder to measure. However, last weekend, we watched some old home videos, 
and I was shocked. Almost every video featured me singing, dancing, talking to the camera, while there were hardly any of my sisters. My mom said it was because my sister didn't like being in front of the camera, but she was only one four years old in these videos. I also had six big birthday parties growing up, while my sister had only three, despite being older. There's even no video of her middle school graduation, just a few photos. I started to think, and there are a lot of examples of my mom favoring me over my sister. Now, I'm questioning everything. I feel embarrassed and don't want to talk to anyone I know about this. I also don't want to admit to my sister that she might have been right all along because I'm afraid she'll become insufferable. Relevant comments. Your sister isn't likely to become insufferable, but she may feel validated. You have to ask yourself, if the roles were reversed, how would you feel? Perhaps your sister isn't shy, but was given unspoken messages that she is not interesting or worthy of attention. That would make anyone introverted and have a hard time making friends. You don't have to atone for your mother's behavior, but you should make it a point to not allow it. Your mother saying your sister is jealous of you is terrible messaging and problematic parenting. Your sister is a human being. She's only going to be living under the same roof for a short time longer. It would be sad to let things continue as they are and potentially miss out on a good relationship with your sibling. I love my sister, but she's already a bit insufferable. Whenever I do something and mom recognizes or compliments me, my sister insists it's not because I deserve it, but because I'm the golden kid. I never asked for my mom to treat us differently. If I could wave a wand and make her treat us equally, I would do it. Instantly. I'm worried that validating my sister's feelings will make her behavior even worse. And I'm already tired of it, and yes, I already talked to her about this. She just rolled her eyes. My mom should recognize and compliment her more, rather than me less. I know I have to talk to her about my realization. I wrote in the post that I don't want to admit it to her because that's how I'm feeling. I have a good relationship with my sister, and I don't want her to feel less loved or unworthy. I'll try to talk with mom too, but I know she'll just brush it off. Better now than never. Talk to your sister about it. Be willing to hear what she says, even if it is uncomfortable. Family therapy is probably a good idea. You are worried that she may be right about having been neglected and you are worried that she might become insufferable. Buddy, it sounds like she has been suffering. It comes down to what kind of person you want to be. How would you feel if the situation was reversed? There are tons of posts here from the siblings of Golden Children. Read them and think about how it must have been and still is for your sister. Do this now, because you may never get another chance. Do you want to be haunted by these issues in 10 or 20 years? You got a wake-up call. It is a second chance to do better. I really love my sister and I don't want her to feel less loved or invalidated. But she is also not perfect. I am worried that she will become insufferable because she already is. If I get an acknowledgement or compliment from my mom, it's never because I actually deserve it. It's always just because mom loves me and I'm the golden kid. I'm sick of this. I feel invalidated, like everything I do is not worthy of a compliment. My mom should treat her better, not me worse. If she already does this now. I can only imagine how much worse it will be if I tell her she was right all along. That is why I'm afraid of telling her. But I know I have to. I just hope she can understand that this is also not my fault. You sound a bit insufferable. I guess she is your sibling. So what is the problem if she does become more insufferable for a while? Maybe if you start showing her that you actually respect her and use your words, you could build an amazing sibling bond. Your excuses for not even trying are insufferable. Do you feel good being rude to a 15-year-old on the internet for no reason? Maybe if you start showing her that you actually respect her and use your words, you could build an amazing sibling bond. How do you know what my relationship with my sister is? We actually have a great relationship. We play tennis and chess together, watch TV shows, and I go to her room to chat almost every day. But yes, sometimes she irritates me, and sometimes I just want to throw her in the nearest trash can, and I'm sure she feels the same about me sometimes. That doesn't mean I don't love her, or that we don't have a good relationship. I already mentioned in my comment that I know I need to talk to her. I was just explaining why I'm afraid to do so. You slash imaginary underscore company underscore 74 responds three hours later. Hi people, OP's sister is here. My brother came to my room to talk to me, and showed me this post he made about the situation. We are talking right now, but I just need to make this quick comment. To all the people being mean to my brother, please stop it. He doesn't deserve it. We have a good relationship, as he said in another comment. We play chess and tennis together, the only physical activity I actually like. 
and we are always watching something together right now it's the boys. He also always pops into my room to talk sometimes to annoy me. I am not going to cut him or my mom off after college. Although he didn't mention it in the post, I'm autistic, and I have a strong feeling this is the main reason why my mom treats us differently. But my brother has never made me feel bad for being autistic in any way, and he has helped me a lot with making friends and social interactions in general. Matt, this is for you. I'm sorry that I made you feel invalidated before when mom treats you better. I know it's not your fault, and I know I can be mean sometimes. I'm making this a public promise that I'll not do this anymore. I love that you came to talk to me. This is something that I have noticed since I can remember, and I'm really happy that you are now seeing it too. Bye people. OP replies 9 minutes later. Hi sis. I will pretend I have not seen you write this comment in front of me right now. But I also want to make a public promise that I will call out mom whenever I notice she's treating us differently. Also, if I don't notice, you are allowed to point it out to me in a positive way, and I won't be hurt by it and will talk to mom when I have a chance. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.